franktalks.com. This program does not represent the views of this station and may be considered offensive to some listeners. This program may contain mature subject matter, including frank discussions of controversial topics. It is intended for mature, open-minded audiences. Discretion is highly advised. This program is entirely independently produced by and is copyrighted by Frank. It is broadcast here under license. You're listening to Frank Talks Pleasures and Lifestyles. I'm Frank because I have to be. On today's show, we are talking to Carlos Zuma. Carlos Zuma is a dating and attraction advisor, as well as a motivational and life counselor. You've probably heard of him from his appearances on ABC television, his appearance at the Cliffs List Convention Seminar, as well as his interview with David D'Angelo. He is the author of The Dating Black Book, Secrets of the Alpha Male, and many other articles and self-improvement programs. He also produces a weekly podcast available on iTunes, a regular newsletter, and his own blog. Carlos brings to the table a variety of life experiences, including a background in relationship skills, life coaching, motivational psychology, sales management, martial arts, teaching and instruction, technology and engineering, Eastern philosophy, the psychology of achievement, and music. Yes, we could probably call him a bit of a renaissance man. Carlos's self-proclaimed mission is to bring men and women together through awareness of both our traditional and contemporary gender roles. He conducts workshops and infield training sessions, as well as group seminars. He can be reached at www.datingdynamics.com. Welcome to Frank Talks, Carlos. Hey, how you doing, Frank? All right. Um, let's get right into the interview. Carlos, let's start off with some basic questions. Where were you born? And tell me a little bit about your upbringing, which eventually led you to running your own website and your own business. I was born in uh, upstate New York, actually, not too far away from you guys. I'm out on the California coast now, but I grew up in a rural area outside of Rochester, New York, in a, an apartment complex, which I think really, uh, the more I look back on it, actually helped in terms of my social development. You know, I interacted with a lot of kids. The apartment complex is a high-density environment. There's a lot of units there, a lot of different kids. So I constantly interacting socially, not only with uh, you know, boys and girls, but just about everybody in the area. And uh, so I had uh, what I would consider a strong father figure. Um, my dad was what you call a classical Italian, you know, very, very masculine, very, uh, very strong-willed. And I remember distinctly this, this moment as I, when I was a kid. I must have been, I could have been more than maybe six or seven years old. Was just in front of the TV, and my dad was flipping through stations, and uh, he came across the movie that was on, and he said, "Here, sit down and watch this. You yeah, yeah. can see this." And it was, uh, it was a James Bond movie. I think it was Diamonds Are Forever. And that was kind of like a, a, an indelible moment in my childhood in terms of really establishing what a male role model was versus a, a feminine or a more passive, more maternal role than my mom was. But uh, you have a good understanding of gender roles. I think I was lucky in that respect. It sounds like with your father being the typical Italian, I came from an Italian background myself, so you always have that strong dominance in the family. Uh, and when you talk about contemporary gender roles, how do you relate that to your own upbringing? That's hard to hear you say it again. Uh, let me try that again. I'm very curious about your mention of contemporary gender roles, because you're talking about traditional gender roles, contemporary gender roles. It sounds like you grew up where you had some traditional gender roles as your examples. Let's talk about some of the contemporary gender roles and how they're different. Well, it's, it's, well I think you guys are getting a lot of negative images, mostly from the media. Um, the, the thing we have to keep in mind is that the media itself caters to its market. You know, it's driven by money and, and who watches it. And uh, a lot of misperceptions are out there in terms of what masculine means today. And in fact, I think for a lot of people, uh, even a lot of women that don't know better, masculine itself bears a, a negative connotation. Think of it as being the, the old classical macho stereotype, the aggressive male that's the not so... Um, emotionally aware of how it's inside. One of the things I'm trying to do with my alpha man archetype and, and uh, model is really give men 
a new ideal in terms of their own development. We're not talking about regressing into what guys used to be, because that's no longer a good standard either. Even the James Bond model has limitations. What we've got to do is evolve to the next level, which is really to take the classical, the best parts of being masculine, and add on new qualities, things like emotional intelligence, social awareness, um, savvy, being cunning, being able to really, uh, not manipulate, but really control social situations to your benefit. Uh, just a whole new skill set that I don't think guys have really grown up understanding and really know how to use. It being the new year, New Year's resolutions are made, especially for guys who spent New Year's Eve alone. If they grew up with the type of environment that you're talking about, the type of environment where maybe they didn't have the best examples of traditional gender roles and such, what's a good place to start? What type of, what type of products do you put out that can help guys start off? That's a good question. I mean, at the start of the year, you have this new, fresh mindset. You want to get active on a, on a whole new path. Um, one of the things that I've got to do is, first of all, don't make resolutions. Resolutions are a self-defeating trap. It's a, it's a fad more than anything else. What I really counsel guys to do is goal setting. Um, you know, have a have. You can have anything you want in life if you want, just help enough other people get what they want. It's something I've heard said many times. And one of the things you have to do for yourself is set goals in all areas of your lifestyle. And these can be something that you can do and typically should do at the start of the year. I just got through doing mine. Uh, set financial goals, set recreational goals, spiritual goals, career goals, dating and seduction, you know, attraction goals, family and health and fitness, different goals for every part of your lifestyle. Um, the reason you gotta you got to really set this and uh, get on this kind of path is it's kind of, if you're part of a successful lifestyle, if you're on your way somewhere, that's what's going to really be attracting women in the long run. That communicates, that permeates every part of your personality. Every part of your conversation is going to have uh, the flavor of a person who's going somewhere in his life. So one of the products that I've created that, that helps guys in that path is my Secrets of the Alpha Man program, which really does go through this whole goal-setting process in a lot of details and helps guys really get in touch with what I feel they need to, which is their, uh, their own personality, their own passions, their own lifestyle, because that's what's going to make it a lasting change to their life. You can learn any number of techniques out there, but, you know, it's not going to do any good if you can't make it part of who you are. Because um, there's really only one difference between the guy who's successful and the one who isn't. It's the guy who's studying, there's a guy who's studying the art of attraction, and there's the one who's going to read it and still sit at home not, not getting laid. And it's his willingness to act. That's the differentiation right there. So one's going to make a difference between a success and a failure. It's doing something and doing it regularly. Stay motivated and make it a part of your, uh, make it a habit, a lifestyle. Carlos, we've got to take a commercial break. You're listening to Frank Talks. Frank Talks is sponsored in part by Everything Out of Her Mouth is a Test, a man's guide to the emotional needs of women. Ladies, does your man squash your inner vixen? When you ask him to repeat what you have just said to him, does he look at you like a deer caught in the headlights? Does he think that leaving the game on while you talk to him is a good idea? Is his favorite phrase, yes dear, you are absolutely right. Does wife or girlfriend mean boring and dull to him? Ladies, don't you wish that he knows what you mean when you ask him if you look fat? Then you need to buy him the book, Everything Out of Her Mouth is a Test, A Man's Guide to the Emotional Needs of Women. On sale now at franktalks.com. Frank Talks is sponsored in part by the Adult Male Virgin Seminars and Telephone Consultations. If you are an adult and want to get a handle on this once and for all, you need this seminar. Being an adult male virgin can be most stigmatizing in today's society. You feel like a failure in the eyes of the mass culture around you, alienated from your male friends who all talk about their sexual conquests, and you must hide this shameful secret lest they use it against you. And the very personal pain, anguish, and despair that cannot be described by words that that haunts you every moment of your life. Enough is enough. It is time for male virgins to take charge of their sex lives. Frank gives you the rules of winning in this seminar, the Adult Male Virgin Seminars and Telephone Consultations. Make your first time the best time of her life. Only available at franktalks.com. Frank helps adult boys turn into men. You want to learn new things? Want to meet new people? Want to discover real possibilities? Listen to Frank Talks, Pleasures and Lifestyles. 
in making the world a better place. Be sure to visit our website at www.franktalks.com for the most update information and the latest downloads of programs just like the one you're listening to now. You're listening to Frank Talks, Pleasures and Lifestyles. I'm Frank because I have to be. In studio today, I have Mr. Carlos Zuma. Carlos, are you there? I am here. All right. In the last interview segment, we were talking about, and I'm just going to summarize this, so if I've made any mistakes, please correct me. Don't set resolutions through self-defeating. Set goals. The material in your book, The Secrets of the Alpha Male, can help a person understand how to set goals and achieve goals, making yourself a better person overall. And something you had said was about building yourself in all areas of your life, which ultimately makes you attractive to women. Does that about summarize what you had said? That's about it. All right. Now, here's a question for you. It also, again, relating to the fact that this is New Year's, people making New Year's resolutions or starting to set goals to change their lives. Should, should a man make his love life a priority? I think he should, but it has to be a very close priority to his own life. I mean, I guess I don't want to give anybody the wrong impression. I think a man's first priority should be himself and his goals and his passions in life. If there's one thing that I've noticed about every interaction that the guy's had with women, whether it's in my seminars, whether it's my personal coaching, or any way that I've worked with men and women, is that when they communicate what they're doing in their life, where they're going, what their uh, their goals are, what they've got their eyes on, you know, that prize, when they communicate that and they talk about it, it they don't need any techniques. They don't need any clever routines. They don't need any storytelling because that, that feeling that he can give off just by having that set goal is immediately communicated to the woman, it's immediately picked up on by her, and it immediately creates attraction because she knows she, she's got a guy that's got ambition here. So if he's going to make his own love life his priority, he's got to do it in a way that doesn't focus on anything outside of himself too much. In other words, if he's going to focus on it as a priority, he should be developing the skills that will get him where he wants to go, not focus on getting this woman or that woman or coming down with that that terminal case of what everybody calls one-itis, you know, that woman that seems to be the one. He's got to really stay focused on developing his own skills. Uh, there's a, a saying, I don't remember what it, the exact phrasing of it, but uh, don't pray to God to give you what you want. Pray for him to give you the skills to get what you want, because that's how you're going to get it. Ultimately, that's how every guy does. And, again, it's really prioritizing himself first uh, and following his goals, following his path. I want to talk about inner game. So uh, I don't remember if it was you who had said this um, or some material that I had read relating to you, but basically it all comes down to building your inner game. And how do you feel about that statement? I think that's fairly accurate. I also don't want to over or rather underestimate the value in having techniques. I mean, it starts with strategy. Strategy is where everything is kind of mapped out at the start. Then there's te- uh, tactics. That's your engagement uh, on the battlefield. And there's techniques. And you do need techniques as a way of understanding how something works. You know, you have to have specific commands. If you're a, comu- if you're a computer geek, you got to know uh, in a computer language what the commands are you have to execute before you can really build a program. The same thing is true when you go out and you approach and talk to women. Having certain uh, tactics and techniques to use is actually very important. But if it's coming from the wrong place, if you're not working at the exact same time on your inner game, well, eventually you're going to be back working with me on it anyways. So one of the things I've learned to do and what I've been passing on to guys is give them what I call inner game techniques. These are ways that you can build your inner game, your sense of self-confidence, self-esteem, your self-image, build yourself up from the inside out through the use of specific methods. Because too, too often somebody tells you you've got to be confident, but you've got no idea how to do that. You've got to have ways to do that, and that's part of what I teach. That's a great point you brought up because I've heard the same thing in the seduction teachings. You just have to be confident, learn to be confident. How can someone learn to be confident with women when that person may never have experienced confidence in any other area of his life? And when someone comes to you and says, Carlos, teach me how to be confident, do you have any specific exercises that you can assign to him that he can go through to help build up that confidence? The first thing I would have somebody do right off the bat is a self-inventory. I mean, right next to 
setting your goals, your direction in life is, I mean, that's kind of your direction. That's looking out the, through the uh, windshield, if you will, of your car that's on the road of life. Um, you also have to take stock of the vehicle that you're in right now. you got to look at it. What do you got? you got automatic transmission. you got standard transmission. How many horsepower? Being able to inventory yourself in the same way, look at your skill sets, uh, do an exercise. This is a very simple one that all guys out there can do right now is to write down I am at the top of a piece of paper and then write down everything they can possibly think of that goes along with that. You know, I am a guitarist. I am a martial arts instructor. These are some of the things that I am, and I can bring those out in a moment, and they give me an immense sense of empowerment because I've got an understanding of my traits, my skills, my abilities, all the things that make me socially valuable in almost any context. So having that inventory done is a great way of starting to shore that sense of self-esteem up. That is really, really great. I have another question for you, and it's still about inner game. If you had to summarize inner game in one sentence, maybe just one definition, inner game is, what would that be in the world of Carlos Zuma? Well, I'd say it would probably be your sense of self-esteem, how much you like yourself, your self-image, how you see yourself, and your self-confidence, what you see, what you see yourself capable of doing in your life, those three things. Let me ask you about your path in being a seduction instructor. Are there any particular success stories from your own students that you feel particularly proud of? Well, actually, there is one recently. I was just up in Seattle. I uh, did a mini boot camp with a couple of guys up at the lair up there after I did a presentation on my real game methodology. And I took a couple of guys out in the field, and uh, one of the guys would... He has a lot of background and a lot of technique information, so he's very technique-y. And what I was trying to coach him to do is to let down some of that, become a little bit more natural with his approach, and let his personality come through so that it seems more like him. Well, he went over to a woman and immediately got blown out. He was really, really interested in her. She was the, the exact look he was looking for. Went over to her, talked to her, and got immediately blown out. Now, this is before I even knew that he was doing this. Then he came over to me, told me what happened. He's like, oh, man, I screwed up. I'm, I just totally messed this up. He was really down on himself. And I said, look, make that your next approach. Go back to her and say, you know what? I screwed up. I know I came on strong with a bunch of lines and all that, but really I was just totally interested in talking to you. And he did. He just went over and he used that exact approach, that very real method of presenting himself and what was going on. And she was immediately, her body language, she turned, faced him, and engaged him in conversation where she didn't before. So that's where the power of presenting your true personality in the right ways, mind you, not in wimpy, wussy ways, but in the right ways, will get you much further. Carlos, we've got to go to another commercial break. You're listening to Frank Talks, Pleasures and Lifestyles. Tune in to Frank Talks, Pleasures and Lifestyles on this station for the most eclectic ensemble of interview guests ever produced. It's honest Frank approaches, trusted professional conduct, and timely taboo topics. From swing clubs and artists to sex workers and alternative lifestyles, Frank Talks is making the world a better place, one interview at a time. He's Frank because he has to be. Check local program listings for times and details. Frank Talks is sponsored in part by the Calibrated Storytelling Seminar. Have you ever felt tongue-tied when talking to a woman and did not know what to say next? This seminar provides the structure to create personalized stories that connect to a woman's emotional needs. Calibration is about putting people into the categories and then modifying your behavior. Do you want to learn how to be truthful about who you are but in an interesting and seductive way? If you want women to like you for the real you, then this seminar is for you. The Calibrated Storytelling Seminar and telephone consultations only available at franktalks.com Frank Talks is sponsored in part by Everything Out of Her Mouth is a Test A Man's Guide to the Emotional Needs of Women Ladies, do you want the man in your life to understand you on your level? Do you want your man to be able to listen to and address all of your emotional needs? Show him how much you really want your relationship to be the best it can be Everything Out of Her Mouth is a Test makes a perfect gift. The book written by a man, for men, is endorsed by every woman that reads it. This book is a guide for men to understand exactly what a woman means when she speaks. Is that worth changing your life forever? Buy this book at franktalks.com now.
You're listening to Frank Talks Pleasures and Lifestyles, and I'm Frank because I have to be. In studio today, we have the man who runs the website, www.datingdynamics.com. His name is Carlos Zuma. Carlos, you there? I am here. All right. I want to talk about one-itis. You had used this term earlier. What is one-itis? How do you define it? And when somebody comes up to you and says, Carlos, I've got one-itis, what's the first thing you tell them? Well, one of this is the mistaken belief that the woman that you're infatuated with is somehow different from the other five or four or three, however many billion other women there are on the planet. The reality is that the woman that you're focused on, that you're so concentrating on, is not going to be more responsive to you by the obsession and fixation you have on her. Uh, There's a saying, you know, you are unique and special, just like everybody else. So this woman that you're really putting in this, unfortunately, uh, too high a pedestal is never going to be uh, attracted to that. So what you've got to learn how to do is pull back and put things back in perspective. First of all, your attitude and your confidence is shot when you focus on one woman entirely. When you train your sights on one woman, you've got no buffer to protect your attitude. Uh, when she rejects you or if she turns you down for a date, you're going to fall into a trap of wondering what it is you did wrong or what you should do next. You get very hyper-attentive. Um, You need to date other women. That's the big rule. That's my rule of thumb. I call it D-O-W, date other women. Because you maintain your attitude, you maintain your confidence, you maintain perspective and comparison, because when you date more than one woman, you've got a frame of reference to compare and contrast their personalities. And uh, it's basically a truth check. You can also have better perceived value. After all, women want what other women want. A man is in demand uh, when other women want him. And you avoid what I call the obsessive self-destruct cycle or the downward spiral. This is where a guy finds a girl that he likes and he starts to focus all of his attentions on her. She starts to pull away because she feels like she's being run over and he continues to push harder because he feels like he's losing her and it goes down and he spirals down the drain. The only way to avoid that is to maintain healthy perspective, healthy balance, and again, shoring up your own sense of self-value so that you don't feel like you have to come on so strong. I got an email from someone who was writing to me for some frank advice related to this topic. I won't read the whole email, but I'll just summarize it. This guy has been in love with the same woman since he was a teenager. He's now in his mid-twenties. It's a ten-year infatuation. He still hasn't even approached her. He's not. He has not asked her out. He's written her a poem. He's thinking about giving it to her. What would you tell a guy like that? (laughs) Before I told him about slapping himself around a little bit in the mirror and, and, and getting a wake-up call. Um, really, the we all have these women in our lives, I think, the one that kind of sticks in our brain a little bit, maybe the one that got away, or maybe the one that didn't quite get away, or whatever it is, but we become fixated. And it's this obsession and fixation that's the true problem. Why is the guy so fixated on her? And why does he think that his actions are going to net him the result that he thinks he's going to get? Again, the same, same advice still holds true. What he has to do is get out there and expose himself to an abundance mindset. The reason the guys get fixated on these, these icons in their mind is because they have a scarcity mindset. They don't see possibility. They only see a limited amount of everything, a limited quantity, a limited amount of success. There's only so much money to go around. Everything is a scarcity mindset, and that's why they chase after these women. If you go out and date 10 women or 20 women and, you know, get into genuine, not half-assed or, you know, just uh, marginal conversations with them, if you actually engage them, you're going to find that that woman doesn't seem quite as interesting after all. She may be in the back of your head, but she doesn't have to be your fixation and obsession. Do you think that most seduction instructors out there all have had this type of experience at one point or another uh, growing up and as part of their development? I think through how I'll admit to it that I've actually, in the last you know year, I actually got in contact with an old childhood sweetheart of mine, not to try and start things up again, but just to see how she was doing and kind of reconnect. We all have these people that, and I think they're, they're a, um, a turning point in our lives in a lot of ways because they push us to an extreme, and I call it bottoming out. Unfortunately, most of us will not change until we hit a certain level of disgust or bottom out with our attitude, and that gives us something to push off of. It's like sinking to the bottom of a lake. Once you can push off the bottom, you can come back to the surface again and fix things. You know, in my own story, um, in my autobiography, I talk about losing my ex-fiancé after a series of really bad events, 
getting stood up at the prom being one of them, and reaching a level of rock bottom where it's either fix this or just forget about it. And why do you think people need to hit this kind of rock bottom, as you call it, bottoming out, before they're actually going to make a change? It's a psychological thing. I think we don't really feel the intensity of pain that's necessary to change. We're all driven by pain and pleasure, right? Mm -hmm. you know, we're driven away from pain and we're driven towards pleasure. Unfortunate thing about pleasure is that it's a very vague and not, not as motivating as the push away from pain. Pain we can imagine vividly. We know what that feels like and we hate it and it's a very strong, strong motivator. Uh, so when we feel that pain of hitting rock bottom, that's enough to turn us around. It's not the lure of what we could get. Most often it's the push away from the pain that we are experiencing. How does someone maintain faith that taking care of this part of their lives, the study of seduction, is actually going to work out for them when everything in their past tells them that they simply were not successful with this? You know, I guess I'd, I'd have to liken it to the warning you get that with the prospectus on any mutual fund, you know, that says, warning, past performance does not indicate future performance. Nothing guarantees you the future, and that's a good thing, because all those mistakes, all those problems you've had in the, in the past can be immediately eradicated by a whole new approach in the future. What got you all those bad results was bad thinking, which led to, led to bad beliefs, which led to bad actions, which gave you bad results. If you change that chain of events from here forward, you're going to net different results. And you think, and you think that that's enough to keep someone? Because I mean, the study of seduction is not an easy one. This is a life-altering path for some people. Yep. They really have to change who they are. It's not just learning a new pickup line. It's not learning the next technique that's uh, going to change their life or get them to grow their dreams. This is a, a, a radical fundamental change at our deepest levels that may start with techniques but eventually it leads on to deeper issues it's such a difficult path for some for some people it may take years to accomplish some people get it in a matter of weeks or even months in your experience as a seduction instructor what has been some of the key elements that has kept guys on the right path even when the long-term uh, road wasn't easy um, there's been a lot of things that I Funny enough, one of them, and it, it isn't necessarily religion or spiritually based, is just faith. You know, faith in themselves, faith in what they're going after and what they're trying to accomplish with their lives. And, I mean, you have to have a certain level of faith, and you get that uh, to a certain degree from watching other examples and, and reading the materials and having these realizations and epiphanies and getting these distinctions. Um, besides that is just a dogged, what I call a bulldog uh, attitude. And, you know, when a bulldog gets one of those those rag dolls in his mouth and he starts tearing down on it. He's like, Arr! you know, he won't let go of it. That's what you got to do with your own self-development. Really, I mean, you got what, like, uh, for most of the guys that are in this area, let's say they're, you know, maybe around 20 to 25 years old, maybe older, um, but you've got another good 40 to 50 maybe years of your life left. What else are you going to do with your time except work on yourself? What else is worth working on? For me, I just can't think of anything else. So I'm going to be working on myself till the day I, dry, I die. You know, it's it's just the way it is. So you've got to be putting yourself on that path, be dogged, relentless, perseverance, and just stick to it and have faith. And then, of course, create your own support system. Have something there in case you reach those dull, those low points. Because every guy does. He hits a low point, doesn't know what to do. He should have his, uh, you know, like they used to have on that Who Wants to Be a Millionaire show, that friend you could call. There's got to be somebody there that you can tap into that can give you a boost and much-needed motivation. One more question before we go to commercial. Where did you start? Who were some of your mentors, since you're talking about having some friends to call, um, and other seduction instructors who you would recommend? You know, I, when I originally started this, it was way before this became popular on the Internet. I won't tell you too far because it will give away just how... Uh, how what my age is, but uh, actually my original introduction to this field was the the book that I think a lot of guys have heard of, F.J. Shark, How to Be the Jerk That Women Love. I got that book out of the bookstores way, way back when it first came out, and uh, a couple of other books that I think are since out of print that really are not even in the seduction-related field. Uh, I think they were called Love Tactics or something like that. That was my first inkling that there are psychological principles at work that transcend what you want. In other words, uh, one of the principles I teach is the truth is reality. The reality is something you can't deny. And the more you do it, the more pain you cause yourself. 
just like Eastern philosophy. So reading these books, I was like, oh, no, this can't be true, but I knew it was, and I had to, I just kept reading them. I highlighted them. They're dog-eared and tattered, but I kept reading those books, and I kept believing that there was another path. That's really kind of what kept me going. We're going to go to commercial. You're listening to Frank Talks, Pleasures and Lifestyles. Frank Talks is sponsored in part by the Personalized Symbolic Peacocking Seminar. Guys, do you think that your father has a great sense of style? Are blue jeans and a clean t-shirt your idea of dressy? Then you need the Personalized Symbolic Peacocking Seminar. Does 1982 live in your closet? Do you own clothes that have more holes in them than a slice of Swiss cheese? Then you need the Personalized Symbolic Peacocking Seminar. Look at the contents of your closet. If you think that navy blue and dark green are your colorful clothes, then you need the personalized symbolic peacocking seminar. When you pick up your date for that night out on the town, does she cringe at your wardrobe? If you think that ladies might wonder if you're colorblind, or if your girlfriend has to remind you to wear a clean item of clothing, then you definitely need the Personalized Symbolic Peacocking Seminar. The Personalized Symbolic Peacocking Seminar and Telephone Consultations, only available at franktalks.com. Frank Talks is sponsored in part by Pimping Your Pet Seminars. Decorating your bachelor apartment, your home, and the way you live is an extension of your sexuality. Frank will show you, with pictures of his own home, what women look for that identifies you as a potential partner. Frank looks at everything from theme rooms to furniture placement and space management to pets to the organization of your bathroom to get women who want to spend the night. The Pimping Your Pet Seminars and Telephone Consultations, only available at franktalks.com. Frank Talks is sponsored in part by the book, I'm a Man, That's My Job, The Philosophy of a Seducer. Ladies, have you ever wondered where all the real men have gone? Do you turn to your woman friends because you cannot find a true man in your life? Do you want the man in your life to step up and know what it means to be a man that can make you feel like the woman that you are? Are you tired of mothering the men you date? Give these boys the gift of manhood. The book, I'm a Man, That's My Job, teaches men to create their own seduction persona personal inner game, and how to take the lead in a relationship. Buy this book now at franktalks.com. You're listening to Frank Talks, Pleasures and Lifestyles. I'm Frank because I have to be. In studio today we have Mr. Carlos Zuma. Carlos Zuma is a dating and attraction advisor as well as motivational and life counselor. You've probably heard of him through his appearances on ABC television, his appearance at the Cliffs List Convention Seminar, as well as his interview with David D'Angelo, and now he's here on Frank Talks, Pleasures and Lifestyles. Welcome back, Carlos. All right, great to be. All right, I want to talk about the lifestyle of a seduction instructor, some of the sacrifices you've had to make in order to live this lifestyle full time, some of the obstacles you've had to overcome, how does your family relate to you now that you're a seduction instructor? Things that the average person would probably not even guess to know. Well, one of the things that you, you just touched on there, the family, that's an interesting thing because every time I talk to my family and the people I'm close to in it, they, uh, they do bring this up and it's funny because your family knows how to push your buttons like nobody else. They highlight the fact that you're going to be tested more by your friends and family than anything else, than any women, when you set yourself out on this path. They're going to test your resiliency and your your um, perseverance to what you're trying to accomplish. They'll even make fun of you. And I feel like that when I still talk to my family. They, they make jokes about it, you know. And I, I just roll with it. I roll with the punches. And it teaches me, again, to stay humble and stay in my attitude and my conviction and belief that what I'm doing is good for guys everywhere. So that's one of the things I've had to handle because a lot of my friends do know what I do. And They'll also bring it up. It's interesting how quickly they'll kind of joke about it at the start, but then as soon as they take me aside, uh, as soon as they get me alone and away from everybody else, they're suddenly flogging me with questions about their own personal experiences and situations. So I know this is something that every guy out there wants to do better in their life, and that's what keeps me going on that path. And when members of your own family or friends will ask you questions like, well, what makes you such an expert? Doesn't that put you off? I love that question. That, that, you know, that's what I tell every guy now is, Anything that, that somebody asks you that you have a knee-jerk reaction of, oh, my God, or if they give you bad news, your first reaction should be, that's great. I'm, I'm so glad you asked that. And then that forces you to come up with a 
reason that it really is great and why you're glad about it. I, whenever I get that question with everybody, I just look at them and say, you know what, an unbelievable you-know-what load of dating pain. That's what got me doing this. That's what made me an expert. And then I just tell them, you know what, would you like me to help you save some of that pain? That's a good answer. I'm going to start using that. <laughs> I want to talk a little bit about that pain that you come from. Any regrets? Do you ever look back and say, you know, I really didn't need to go through all that in order to get to where I am now? Um, you know, I wish I could say that I had regrets, but I just can't live my life that way. I can't live my life in the rearview mirror. And the unfortunate thing is that in order to get anywhere in life, you got to pay a price to get there. Nothing, in worth, nothing worth doing in life will be easy. That's just a guarantee right there. And if I were to sacrifice or try and go back and change any of the things that did happen to me, I wouldn't be the same person and I wouldn't be at the same point in my life. So, no, I can't, I can't say I have any regrets about any of it. Let's talk about your iPod downloads. What's the setup? What can people expect when they go to your website and download it? Do they even go to your website? And what can they expect to listen to when they download something? That's a good question. The, the two different programs I'm offering right now, one is a, very, is a free program for any guy that just wants to get started on this path and get going, and that's the, the, uh, the regular podcast every week. I pretty much put that out uh, ritually every weekend for like the last uh, well over a year and a half now, and they can get on that just as easy as downloading iTunes from the Apple Store and just you know looking me up, look up Carlos Zoom or Dating Dynamics. The other part of that is my regular dating coaching program. It's advanced coaching, and I offer that monthly. It's a subscription fee, but it's consistently uh, strong information on a variety of topics dealing with dating, uh, different than what David D'Angelo puts out. He interviews dating gurus. What I do is I give you specific information on every facet of being an alpha man, from good conversation to, um, to dating to uh, you know, handling objections, handling tests, handling all of it. Let's talk about future aspirations. Where do you see yourself in about 10 years? In 10 years, I see myself uh, with my own TV show, possibly my own radio show. You could help me with that. Pretty much men and women to get this thing together because I think it's a mutual goal. It's a goal for both, both sexes. When I talk to women, they're, you know, they're overjoyed that guys are learning these skills. And as long as they're not learning them in you know, manipulative ways, they're, they're, fan, they're overjoyed to be helping out in any way they can. Um, I also am working on expanding, creating boot camps, creating seminars to help guys get back on their true path because I think that's what's really happened is they've just gotten temporarily pulled off by misinformation and misdirection, the lack of good male role models in their family, and they just need to get back on the real path, get back on track. So that leads us to our next question. Where does a guy start? Years ago, when uh, we all were just starting to learn with this, there just wasn't that much material out there. There were some books, maybe one or two gurus putting out products. There wasn't the variety that exists now. A newbie comes into this now, is inundated with dozens of names. We even have entire three-day conventions filled with gurus, and even when half of them don't show up, there's still enough people to fill up the time. Where does a guy start? I think he should start with material, first of all, that's closest to his personality, his, his actual, you know, inclinations, the way he is, not trying to reach too far outside himself, not trying to aspire to be any one of these people in particular. And I definitely think this is what I consider one of the best places in terms of an information buffet. I'm a, I'm a total information chunky, and the first thing I did when I realized there was more information to be had was I just soaked in it. You know, I, I get everything I could, possibly could. But at a certain point, you've got to cut it off and just say, you know what, enough's enough. i just got to take what I've got and act on it because that's really what's going to make the difference right there. So for them to start, I mean, I would definitely recommend with any of the programs that, you know, we're familiar with in the, in the, in the industry, my own, of course. I've got eBooks, audio. There's, of course, David D'Angelo's products, which are also very good stepping off points to other uh, instructors. Sample it all. Take a, a good, a healthy sampling of all of it and then determine where you're going to go with it and then just get going, get active, stop, you know, sitting at home reading because you can get very addicted to that process and not out there actually doing something about it. You know, you talk about addiction, and I haven't touched on this subject yet, so since you brought it up, let's go with it. I find that a lot of guys, when they get into this study of seduction, get so wrapped up in learning the next thing that they aren't even bothering putting any of this into action. 
to the point where it becomes an obsession, yep. some sort of an addiction. They have to take the next seminar. They have to buy the latest product. They have to go out there and just learn more stuff. Yep. But they're not getting more sex. They're not even getting themselves an occasional girlfriend. What would you say to a guy who's taken this to the point of an addiction? Well, when you're, there's a reason for it, right? We've got to identify what the problem is. And the problem is that they're, um, they're identifying their own learning process as action, as, um, as moving forward, when in fact what they're really doing is reaching a point of diminished returns and they're not getting any better. The first couple of bits of information they get are all valuable and great, and they awaken you and they bring, make you more aware. But it's when you've gotten to this point, you just got to cut yourself off. you got to take the stuff, put it aside, determine what it is you're going to act on, and then, again, get down to the brass tacks. Set out your battle plan. What are you actually going to do? Because really learning in a lot of cases in this information addiction that we've become really used to, I think, in today's culture, is it's an excuse not to act. That's all it really is. And the more you can stay in that mode of learning, it's like you're in college. You don't have to worry. You can go out and party all the time. You don't have to make a living. You know, it's the same mentality. Just get down to it, start using the information, and get busy. What are the chances that we're going to see you up in Canada? You know, I was uh, up there for Cliff's List this past year, and I want to get back up there again real soon. I know there's, uh, there's more opportunities that way. Plus, my family's up there. You know, I gotta, it's only a hop across the pond. You have family up here? What city? Uh, actually, not in Canada. I have a family over in Rochester, and, you know, we drive over to Niagara Falls, up to Toronto all the time. Oh, that's fantastic. I'm based here in Toronto, so the next time you're up in town, we'll definitely have to get together. We can talk about radio. That'd be awesome. All right. Um, are we ready to take a next commercial break? Yes, we are. I'm getting the signal. You're listening to Frank Talks Pleasures and Lifestyles, and we'll be back. From Loser to Seducer is the story of Frank B. Kermit. This book marks the triumph of a nice guy over most of his inner demons. This includes going from being a loser to managing five lovers at the same time, his first Valentine's Day with two women at the same time, and getting back the one that got away. Want to learn how you can change your life? Buy this book at franktalks.com. Frank Talks is sponsored in part by the Adult Male Virgin Seminar and Telephone Consultations. Guys, if the only breast you ever touched was in a bucket of chicken, you need the Adult Male Virgin Seminar. If the only thing you've licked recently has been your fingers to turn the pages of a book, you need the Adult Male Virgin Seminar. If the only female body part you are familiar with wears a cape, can fly, or has superpowers, you need the Adult Male Virgin Seminar. If you think the G-Spot is the name of a new club, you need the Adult Male Virgin Seminar. If the words missionary conjures up images of guys in long robes, you need the Adult Male Virgin Seminar. If the only sensation your fingers have had are pressing the buttons on your remote control, then you need the Adult Male Virgin Seminar. Do you know what it means when a woman asks you up to her place for coffee? If you think that she is thirsty for caffeine, then you definitely need the Adult Male Virgin Seminar. Only available at franktalks.com. Frank helps adult boys become men. Honest Frank approaches trusted professional conduct, timely taboo topics, and the most eclectic ensemble of interview guests ever produced. Listen in to Frank Talks to learn about the different sides of the human spirit. Be sure to visit our website at www.franktalks.com for the most update information and the latest downloads of programs just like the one you're listening to now. You're listening to Frank Talks Pleasures and Lifestyles. I'm Frank because I have to be. In studio with Carlos Zuma. Carlos, you there? All right, the uh, show's almost over. This time for the guest to put in a product plug. Carlos, what are some products that are coming out uh, that we all should know about? Well, the first thing I tell you guys to do is get to datingdynamics.com. Get on my newsletter, and so you'll get into the information cycle. I publish a regular newsletter with advice. You'll get the podcast. You'll get the blog listing. That's where you start, and then I'll send you information on how to connect to the rest of it. Um, as far as products, I started out with the Dating Black book many years back, and 
that's since become you know pretty much a staple out there for a lot of guys. That's the best starting off point. From there, most guys have had the success and the real understanding of what it is I'm teaching from the Secrets of the Alpha Man program. That's a CD and ebook program that really puts you on that path of self-development as well as understanding how men really need to present themselves to women. So it does have techniques, it does have strategies and tactics for you to use. And then from there, I always recommend the guys from, I actually videotaped a seminar of mine in 2006 and uh, the Alpha Immersion Program. So there's a whole DVD program based around that, which gives much more in-depth and concentrated information for the would-be in developing Alpha Man. I've also got an approach program for guys that want to learn how to approach women more effectively. We've got the advanced coaching that I talked about. And then on the horizon, I've got uh, an Alpha Conversation program. I'm in the studio right now recording this that will give them just about everything you could possibly want to know on just talking to anybody, not just women, talking to authority, talking to your family, how to converse and communicate effectively. And it's going to be a killer set. It's going to be very, very big because there's an awful lot to talk about, especially when I get talking. And then uh, watch out. There's going to be a Vegas seminar coming up, I believe, after the first quarter of this year that uh, guys can get in, get some real ground-level experience, and uh, become a part of what we're, what we're teaching here, this whole new lifestyle. Fantastic. Okay, our last question of the night. I give a seminar for adult male virgins, guys in their 20s, 30s, and even 40s, who have never even gone out on a date. What's your first initial reaction to hearing about the existence of adult male virgins? You know, I, I wish I could say this is the first time, but unfortunately it's not. I was just up in Tahoe, and I met one of these guys, and I got to, you know, understand by talking to them firsthand what it is that's going through their heads and what where they are in their belief systems. And that's really where it is. It's a very complicated belief system they've put into their heads that has left them in this, and I, I don't want to say condition, but I guess that's the only way to call it. Um, really, there's a lot of internal work that's going to have to be done there, but again, it's not impossible. It's something that's got to be worked on. Um, it starts with what their beliefs are about themselves, what their self-defeating habits are, because I see a lot of that. These guys are creating um, roadblocks for themselves in their own lifestyle. They create excuses to not go out. You know, they, embed, they immerse themselves in a, a nerdy, junky lifestyle where they're playing games and being very uh, internally focused. They just got to get motivated to break out of that mold, and it does take some internal work. Not something we can handle on on today's call, but something that they can do. Carlos, it's been absolutely great having you here on Frank Talks Pleasures and Lifestyles. We definitely invite you to come back again sometime in the future. When you got a new product or seminar coming out, give us a call and we'll do another interview. Absolutely. It's been great. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, Frank. All right. You're listening to Frank Talks Pleasures and Lifestyles. Be sure to visit our website at franktalks.com. Goodbye. Frank Talks is sponsored in part by Everything Out of Her Mouth is a Test, a man's guide to the emotional needs of women. What would your life be like if you knew exactly what to say and do with women? This book is for the guy that simply wants to learn how to handle women's tests by addressing her emotional needs. By this, you create the type of attraction that will make her see you as the one she was destined to be with. This book will teach you how to get the woman you want and how to keep her. Everything out of her mouth is a test is the Rosetta Stone for men to understand exactly what a woman means when she speaks and how to respond. Is that worth changing your life forever? Buy this book at franktalks.com now. Need help with love, sex, dating, or relationship issues? Help from Frank Kermit, the best-selling author and Canada's most international relationship coach, is only a click away at franktalks.com.
franktalks.com franktalks.com What do you do when you feel like a fool when your heart has been broken again Pick up the phone or get on to Skype and talk on a private session. Yeah, get a little help from Frank Talks. Whoa, whoa, get by with a little help from Frank Talks. You gotta try a little help from Frank Talks. What do you do when your love goes? To turn things around Just sign up at franktalks.com Yeah, get by with help from Frank Talks mm-hmm, I get by with a little help from Frank Talks mm-hmm, Time to try a little help from Frank Talks Rate going around. We're certain, just read the reviews. Frank knows his stuff, and Frank sabotages. Good love can soon come to you.